Yeah, uh, playing with Kairos is his title. <laughs> In quotes. So let's do red. Because <laughs> I'm not sure what quote-unquote playing with Kairos all entails. Oh my goodness. I uh, go switch into this stream after uh, Marsh is oh. faded. <laughs> it's like blindingly bright. So let's see. So is this... Specs cuties? No, this is Spectrum. So they are in round five. Think we can watch Unity and Muffin Stuffers? It's gonna be an insane match. Uh, who do we got from there? Um... Is anyone from Muffin Stuffers streaming? I'm looking around. I'm not See. seeing anything. Uh, Unity is streaming, aren't they? Quick knots, deep blue, quick knots, specs cuties, quick uh, deep blues, Kairos, Kairos, uh, the cucks, and uh, unknown. Yeah, so we'll just chill here. Watch some uh, Kairos v Spectrum. Good, wholesome fun for the whole family. It looks like they're... Kairos is going a pretty standard comp. Except for the Forge. The Forge is a little different. Forge is a little unique for this map because I feel like it's very good for like the the streets and just once it's like in their office and so on. But like the mid part of the map, it's very awkward because with the fans going up and down, it can go from, you know, you got that long range advantage to suddenly that you're fighting in a close quarters situation. Sure, yeah. I think, uh, by itself, I think you're right, but I think when paired with the uh, the Carbon and the Luna, it, it lends itself well. Helps get them a bit more of that range that they need. Yeah, once if it can use its range and start covering things, and along with the Dynamo to also help cover things, then it allows for their other two teammates to help them in those situations where it won't be very ideal for the Forge. But if there's that chance where it is alone, and those fans go up while they're sitting in front of it, then something short range comes up, which they, which the Spectrum doesn't really have anything short range, then, you know, it's kind of a questionable situation. Because despite the fact that the pros are very good at killing three shots, it seems like there's like this panic mode or anytime a pro. And it's like there's this close range situation where it seems like their their aim just goes downhill. <laughs> when the adrenaline hits. Yeah, like I'll I'll play against people that use like the berry and can like really good when it's when they're playing from their range, but the, the second you're in their face, they can't aim anymore. And Red doing what he does best and just going in. He takes that carbon. He applies its 12-frame kill, 
and doesn't care what happens to him. Caution to the wind. Yeah. Nearly cornered by the suction bombs. <laughs> oh. Nice little surprise for Zero. Oh, <laughs> that pink Zuka. Almost mechanical the way that uh, Kairos is taking them out spectrum. So I'd just like to bring out the conditions wow. for um, this uh, wow. match that's happening with Muffin Stuffers. So, basically, if Unity wins and uh, Stratosphere loses, it is a three-way tie. Okay? That sounds like fun. Now, if Unity wins and... Um, so hold on, let me try and get this straight. If Unity wins and they have less games, like it's not a 3 2, it ends like a 3 1, uh, then um, Muffin Stuffers make it through and Unity go through first place. If Muffin Stuffers finish first, they go through. And Unity wins. Uh... Hold on. Brain's hurting. <laughs> anyway, back to the match for the time <laughs> being. Back to what people are here for. There's a bit of a struggle when it comes to getting back into their street here. Yeah. Uh, Red using his Inkzuka to try and cover, which... The Inkzukas and the Whales are interesting when it comes to that street area because they don't, like, the Inkzukas don't really get blocked by any objects. And because of the, the fact that they travel and their hitboxes work in such a way where their hitbox still technically exists below them, it actually, like, getting a, a good angle down their street with a single Inkzuka shot can hit, per, uh, can hit in some wide and very weird spots. Mm -hmm. And then a Whale is also pretty good for pushing out anything inside their street, if you know where to stand, there's one spot where if you just use the whale, nothing in their street will survive. Oh, oh. oh that blessed life that Red is leading, with that sign taking out that Rainmaker shot. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> I think this position in particular with the Inkzuka is really shows off what you were talking about earlier. A nice safe spot with that uh, drop that it has is still able to hit all of down that ramp. Yeah, and the the distance it travels before it, it completely like dissolves, I guess, is just enough for it to still cover the entirety of the street. And I've done this once before, but there is you can set up a couple, like two whales, to not only push people out of the spots in their street that would be safe, or that you know push them out of their street, but then the second whale covers where they could possibly hide, which is really just on that snipe area, and just the turn over to their office. So it pushed them into their office, or pick off the people that can't and just evade both of them at the same time. Oh, the turn with that Very Inzuka. Nice. Oh, and the hunt begins. <laughs> oh, and they he were gets able caught. to fend off, the, fend off Red. One v four, throws caution to the wind. <laughs> Hungry for that Rainmaker. Uh, so Tomo is unknown three one. Nice stuff. Red, just swimming up to the pro, was like, I don't care about your shots. <laughs> Doesn't... 
not really too much to say about everyone's KDs. Everyone was pretty pretty even, and the match was actually pretty back and forth. Mm -hmm. So can't really say too much about how that went, other than well, I guess uh, Kairos playing better defense. Spectrum was unable to really get inside their street, which I would assume is probably because uh, the best was probably just sitting there waiting because taking advantage of the the Luna's hitbox makes it so they can cover that entire box area so they can't climb straight up into their street and then the the small entrance way from their fan can also be covered by its blast leaving pretty much just the office is like I guess the only real safe <laughs> way to go yep not to mention crab I'm sure made sure that that entire mid was just inked so every time yeah. they went to go make a push out of their force out of uh coming from a drop from office they had to repaint everything just giving more time for red to do like he did earlier and just flanking from behind as well as the best to get set up with his luna and uh what a lot of teams seem to to not really get and uh, they they rush into this is they will pick up the rainmaker thinking they always need to have it and so there'll be times where they'll pick up the rainmaker and have no map control say like if you have your dynamo pick up the rainmaker then you've just dropped one weapon that can give you all the control you need to actually move. There are times though, especially if it's pushed far back, where you want to just pick it up just to get it out. Like even just yeah, getting it reset move, but... into the mid is better than letting it sit in behind your base while you're trying to push up. Yeah, there's there's always going to be those times where if it's too far into your base, you want to grab it. If not, to just reset it by jumping off the map or just moving it so if you die, you're just not, you know, like... 10 points away from your pedestal. Right. But uh, there are some situations, like, say if it was the, the Rainmaker was in their office, just sitting there at the entrance, and they needed some map control, they could let it sit there technically and start getting some control. They don't have to pick it up, but the way a lot of teams see it is they will pick up the Rainmaker and use, use it to kill and paint that way, but it's not exactly the most reliable way of killing. Uh, yeah. most, obviously, the tornado is so obvious that you can avoid it, despite its wacky hitbox sometimes. Though if you do hit it right, it's so much fun to use to get kills. <laughs> oh, yeah. There have been all too many times where I've uh, tried making a killing shot and just being off by a fraction of a degree, and it just slides right past him. I just want to point out one more thing. Um, I actually, everyone's making my life hell today. There's three three <laughs> ties in three brackets. Uh, I only oh, had nice. you to blame soon, uh, as you're the one who made the seeding. Obviously, I mean, in a way, fault. in a way, in a way, it means the seeding is <laughs> amazing. <laughs> it means that the brackets are really even, right? The groups, yeah. Which means I'm a god, but that's bad for me. <laughs> uh, like. Well, I mean, the final final tiebreaker is uh, another tower knockout. Oh. Great if we had so an animation for this. If Kairos wins and it goes 3 0, this map, <laughs> this group is in a three way tie for second place in every aspect. They all finish 3 2, they all beat each other, and they all have the same score differential, if I'm not mistaken. So, we didn't really talk too much about that match. <laughs> well, we did a little, a little bit. Uh... Yeah, we did a bit. It went by pretty fast. But <laughs> I want to want to mention that I noticed Tetsu was using the Bamboozler Mark One. Actually, really good, especially because it seemed like uh, Spectrum was focused uh, like their their fifty two with his splash wall in that splash wall one v one with the Bamboozler Mark One. The Bamboozler is actually very capable of shredding splash walls down. Especially if you're running enough damage up, it can destroy them instantly because of the amount of damage that it can do and how fast it can output that damage. It'll destroy the splash wall, leaving the 52 with nothing. And Which again it seemed is just like wrong. Was... <laughs> oh yeah. It shouldn't be capable of doing such things. <laughs> well, it's just any splatling. If a splatling looks at a splash wall, it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Um... And speaking of which, Crab pulling up the uh, the Hydra. I'm curious to see if uh, Spectrum is going to maintain their Hydra that they had last map, of which I would argue is would have 
is an odd choice to have on Museum uh, PC. Um, I'm guessing they went for it for the bubble, um, but it's probably a little bit too slow for that particular instance and with the risk of bubbles on the tower anyway for that final leg of the journey. Alright, so we're back in walleye squad zones. Mentioned before, I wasn't looking at the, the monitor with the stream, but I'd, I would imagine at least Spectrum has a dynamo, if I had to guess. Let's see here. Oh, he got... Okay, so... Taking that by a splatter shot. Unfortunately, it was in a 1v2 there, so it's not the best situation for him. Though I just noticed that Red is using... A shooter, and his stream also appears to be dying. I guess Red isn't too comfortable with using uh, carbon here. It seems like Red is opting to wait for his teammates to return to him, which is smart. Because I mentioned earlier that uh, during one of the, the earliest matches with uh, on Hyatt's Splat Zones, that it is smart to not go into Splat Zones, like try to get back into the map. You should not be doing that alone. And Heights is one of the few maps where it actually can slightly benefit from separating and trying to force out the, the, force out the situations where you'll be in a 1v4. And that's mostly because of multiple zones. When it comes to squad zones, teams tend to prioritize the zone that isn't theirs. So if there are times where you're getting locked out on like skate park or port, the best way to get yourself back in is to ignore your zone and go for theirs. Because the chances are they have maybe one person watching it at most. Uh, I'd also like to point out uh, a little bit ago, Red made a very strong play with the Zinc Strike. He had it for a good while and was sitting on top of it, uh, instead opting for waiting on his teammates to get into position, uh, thus allowing him to strike the far end of the zone, and then two or three of them were able to hop in and strike uh, their side of the zone with their weapons and instantly cap it. Uh, Spectrum was able to get the map back, but it immediately added that timer on top of him, which is a very yeah, strong play. Yeah, it gave him more time to, to get back in there. Yeah, it put on that penalty, that. which put... Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, it applies the pressure for Spectrum to do something and might cause them to slip up because they feel like they have to make a move. Because in that case in particular, the, uh, the waiting that he was able to do uh, lost him the lead. But just waiting for his teammates to get in position and dropping that strike at that time where all teammates were able to get and do an instant cap uh, put more time on the clock for them than what they had lost. So even though they technically had the lead, uh, it put them in a much greater position to get the lead back. Okay, so we got here that Kairos lost the lead again. They only took it by one point, so it wasn't too much of a, a loss there. Uh, Red trying to get this was our ten attack out. No, uh, Wasabi unfortunately ends up trading with him. Uh, here, so there is there's three down on Spectrum. This will give the uh, Kairos the moment to get back in here and take control and start getting the rest of the map inked. Because, as mentioned before, they want to have pretty much every entrance covered. Um, pushing up to their plat, wow. not exactly ideal. You can do it, but if you push yourself up too far, because the entire team is right, the enemy team is right there, you will pretty much set yourself up to be guaranteed dead. So it'd be much, it'd be much better plan to just sit and hold the sides and hold their closed and have a weapon that's long range and or a good fire rate to watch their closed. One of the, the better weapons for watching that is actually the jet. The jet can cover the entire closed and has a, a decent enough fire rate to be able to handle it. Uh, similar in that case, the uh, the heavy and hydro spot as well uh, do a great job of covering that closed in the same fashion. Yeah. Having um, the regular, or the vanilla uh, heavy is actually really good because you can throw that on splash while they'll stop advances and then use the yep. charge to push them further back. And, uh, remix as well, you can put the uh, sprinkler up high, forcing them to either uh, look up to shoot at something or uh, 
ignore it entirely and able to get a couple shots on them before they even get down to you. Oh yeah, sprinklers are like the the best bait for getting someone who's sharking out. Like you just throw a sprinkler in the middle of the map, you're guaranteed to have at least one person who pops up to break it. So if someone that's like yes. in their clothes trying to be sneaky and you notice the sprinkler just broke, and you know there's someone there. Kairos is in a good position. They got a lot in cup. It's probably going their way, but this is oh, it's gonna be tight. Uh, Spectrum has three down, they got, and that's that. They take the lead back in overtime. Why? Oh, no, this is terrible. So it wasn't a knockout, but I'm going to play the danger zone anyway, because that was awesome. <laughs> I am the one in control. And Tetsu is... going Bamboozler Mark Three, actually a good choice there as well. It's uh, it's got enough range that it can cover the clothes as well, just like what we were mentioning, where weapons with a uh, decent fire rate or long range should be watching the closed. Mm -hmm. With how fast Bamboozler can output its shots, it's also a good one for watching. Wow. 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 So now, Cryptic is going to have nightmares. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Quick knots or maximum overdrive. I saw maximum overdrive playing earlier. 